Hi everyone, it's Lisa Ryan from Counseling for Busy People and founder of Advocacy Circle Marriage and Family Counseling. Thanks for joining us. Today I'm going to talk with you about the five most common mistakes we women make when we're trying to recover from the infidelity of our spouse, our boyfriend, or our significant other. If you don't make any of these five mistakes, you will recover faster, far faster, and with far less pain. Following these tips will also help you to forgive, if that's what you'd like to do. Some of what I suggest may be difficult, but at the end of the day, you might be really grateful you followed these five things. And let me just say right now, I'm so very sorry you're in this position. So these are the five infidelity recovery mistakes that you absolutely must not make. Number one, avoid details. Knowing all the details will cause you harm for years to come. Details make recovery take so much longer. Sometimes details even make recovery impossible. Those people who have the most difficult time getting over an affair are those who discovered the unfaithfulness by finding a picture on an iPad or a cell phone. That's because an image becomes imprinted in a person's mind and it makes it that much harder to dislodge. Pictures get embedded in your head with deeper roots than mere words. When you ask for a lot of details, you are actually collecting puzzle pieces of a mental image. It's in your best interest to stay away from anything specific that will create a snapshot in your own head. Details have ruined the enjoyment of great restaurants and vacation spots for couples. I know one woman who refuses to go to the state of California because her husband once met a woman there. I think it's her loss. Don't ever let another woman take an entire state away from you. Try your best to tape right over it. Create a new memory in your mind and in his. The worst is when details enter your bedroom. Regaining intimacy is tough enough after an affair. Don't make it harder for yourself. Avoid the details. Don't torture yourself needlessly. Number two, don't rush yourself to get over it. Healing takes time and healing takes honesty, consistent honesty. It also takes lots of patience. You are not going to recover fully if you continuously find out new pieces of information that were not disclosed immediately upon the discovery. So get all the information that you need as soon as you can. Express appreciation to your spouse for his candor and courage. I know that that's a hard one to swallow, but it helps. And sometimes recovery goes up and down. I want you to know that. So don't be fooled when you think you've put it past you. You're still vulnerable to having a bad day, a bad moment, or even a bad week. And it hits you with no warning at all sometimes. How long it takes you to recover is of course up to you. It's not up to your spouse or boyfriend. Everyone is different. Every situation is different. Don't be pushed into pretending that you're over it when you're not. If he continues to push you, then tell him to go to a hotel. Give yourself time. Number three, please don't tell the whole world. Be careful who you share your story with. Believe me, I have your back on this. What happened is a private matter. As close as you might be to your parents, they are the absolute worst choice when you need love and comfort under these circumstances, especially moms. The people who love you most are also the people with the longest memories. They'll hate him forever for hurting their little girl. And it will make your life miserable. You want your mother and father to love him, but if they know what happened come Thanksgiving, there will be an unmistakable and understandable chill. So avoid that at all costs. Be smart. Choose to talk with a non-judgmental and trustworthy friend whom you don't see all that often maybe, or pick an old friend who lives far away. And don't forget to keep a journal. That helps too. 
pour your grief into pages and pages on your laptop. One day, you may choose to print the whole thing out and then burn it together. Number four, don't get angry with yourself. What happened was not your fault. Don't be afraid to repeat your questions and don't feel intimidated because you keep asking the same stuff. It is so normal. You'll also have a harder time trying to focus on other things, so expect that. Be kind with yourself when you forget things or you can't complete the things you normally do. Betrayal can feel like a little death. It's such a blow to learn something you never thought possible actually happened. Your mind and body are in shock. So be kind with yourself and remember what happened was not your fault. Number five, try not to ruin the good moments. Schedule an hour or two per day maybe to discuss what happened with your spouse or your boyfriend. Feeling heard and getting all of your questions answered is essential to infidelity recovery. But if you're continuously bringing up the betrayal throughout every evening and every weekend, you won't be able to enjoy each other and rebuild something better and lasting. So give your relationship a chance. I can't tell you how long it's going to take you to see your boyfriend or your spouse in the same way you used to. A lot depends on how fully accountable he is with you and also how remorseful he is. Just remember that no matter what the quality of your relationship was before or during the affair, it wasn't your fault. I'm so sorry. You feel so heartbroken. But it will get better. I hope you found this useful. If you did, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and remember to click the subscribe button so you won't miss any future videos. If there's any questions you have for me, please don't hesitate to drop me a line below or write to me privately through my website at counselingforbusypeople.com backslash contact. Thanks so much for your time and you take good care.